robotics first came onto the market, it was about replacing human labor. So that's been the assumption. When any robot is introduced, it's about replacing people. Social robotics as a whole field, as a whole research discipline, has been about a very different paradigm, which is about partnership. It's about robots that can support and collaborate with people. Welcome to Fresh Dialogues. I'm Alison Van Diggel, and today I'm with Cynthia Brazil, who is the chief scientist at the robot company Jibo, and she's also professor at the MIT Media Lab. Cynthia, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about Jibo. Jibo is a social robot. Jibo kind of breaks down those barriers by feeling again much more like a someone than a something. And you know we've put in my research at MIT very sophisticated humanoid robots, you name it. But when you create that experience for people, that familiar, warm experience, people respond to it. So I think Jibo has an appeal across a much broader demographic. Oh. Jibo is really about supporting the family, supporting those who help care for the family. In the case of doctors and nurses, helps make the whole human and technological network stronger and better able to serve human values. That's, that's the message. That's the big value add of this kind of technology. Um, and that's certainly where my heart is, because certainly as a mom and so forth, I completely understand the value and the importance of the human connection and the human relationships. And we have human responsibilities to each other. Technology should not be mitigating that or interfering with that. We want technology to really support that. We've had warnings from Elon Musk, from Stephen Hawking, saying artificial intelligence needs some um, regulation. Yeah. They're concerned about mm -hmm. this robot apocalypse happening. Mm -hmm. So talk to that. I think in terms of the robot apocalypse, I mean, I think, you know, <laughs> We love that theme, <laughs> you know, throughout our stories, our legends, you know. Mm -hmm. Movies. And in many ways, you know, it really is a, it, it is a tool that we use as a culture, I think, to really ask the question, what does it mean to be human? I really think it stems from that. And so whether it's aliens or killer viruses or robots, right, it is that otherness that pushes up against our humanity that causes us to reflect upon the human condition. So, you know, for robots, of course, because they have existed in our science fiction, you know, long before we could actually build them, I think this is kind of this cultural undercurrent that um, people can't help but almost go there no matter what, I think. Mm. But, the, but the difference with this is it's not some, you know, Luddites who are saying this. It's people like Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk, and I think Bill Gates has joined now, too, warning people about the the dangers of artificial intelligence. Right, so I mean I would say it's different between the apocalypse <laughs> versus there could be unintended consequences right. that we really need to be cognizant of and and be mindful of, right? So I'm agreeing that with any technology capable of tremendous impact on how we live our lives, there's always those two sides, right? And so certainly robotics, I I absolutely believe I think anyone would, you know, agree that it's, you know, it's going to become a pervasive technology in our lives. And so it is worth really considering how do we make sure that we go for the good and avoid the bad. Right, so there's that. How, how do you do that? Do you think, I mean, from where you're sitting, does it need regulation? Does it need government regulation or some kind of standards? What, what's the, the best way to proceed? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we honestly really know what the best way to proceed is. I think the bottom line is first, you know, it starts with us and having thoughtful dialogue and discussion to try to really understand what the opportunities and the unintended consequences really could be before we start you know, jumping to conclusions. I think the most important thing we can do right now is have this thoughtful dialogue. And even things like we started off with, people's assumptions around all robots are about replacing people versus this other side, which robots are about supporting people, right? 